Welcome to Penguin Audio Book Break. This week, Joel Fatinos shares selections from How to Be Rich on how to make friends with money and exploring the mind as a magnet. Penguin Audio presents How to Be Rich, compact wisdom from the world's greatest wealth builders, including Napoleon Hill, Joseph Murphy, Wallace D. Waddles, Robert Collier, and more. Edited by Patricia G. Horan. Read by Joel Fotinos. Start over with a friendly new attitude toward wealth. You have a right to be rich, so make friends with money. From The Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Joseph Murphy, 1963. Money has taken many forms as a medium of exchange down through the centuries, such as salt, beads, and trinkets of various kinds. In early times, wealth was determined by the number of sheep and oxen one had. Now we use currency and other negotiable instruments, as it is much more convenient to write a check than carry some sheep around with you to pay bills. It is your right to be rich. You are here to lead the abundant life and be happy, radiant, and free. You should, therefore, have all the money you need to lead a full, happy, and prosperous life. You are here to grow, expand, and unfold spiritually, mentally, and materially. Why be satisfied with just enough to go around when you can enjoy the riches of your subconscious mind? You can learn to make friends with money, and you should always have a surplus. Your desire to be rich is a desire for a fuller, happier, more wonderful life. It is a cosmic urge. It is not only good, but very good. Cleanse your mind of all weird and superstitious beliefs about money. Do not ever regard money as evil or filthy. If you do, you cause it to take wings and fly away from you. Remember that you lose what you condemn. You cannot attract what you criticize. Another look at making friends with money from The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace D. Waddles, 1910. There is nothing wrong in wanting to get rich. The desire for riches is really the desire for a richer, fuller, and more abundant life, and that desire is praiseworthy. People who do not desire to live more abundantly are abnormal. And so people who do not desire to have enough money to buy all they want are abnormal. You have the inalienable right to fully develop and express yourself along all lines. You should surround yourself with beauty and luxury. Why be satisfied with just enough to go around when you can enjoy the riches of the infinite? Make friends with money. There are three motives for which we live. We live for the body We live for the mind. We live for the soul. None of these is better or holier than the other. All are equally desirable, and no one of the three, body, mind, or soul, can live fully if either of the others is cut short of full life and expression. It is not right or noble to live only for the soul and deny mind or body, and it is wrong to live for the intellect and deny body or soul. We are all acquainted with the loathsome consequences of living for the body and denying both mind and soul, and we see that real life means the complete expression of all that we can give forth through body, mind, and soul. You Can't Enjoy What You Despise From The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace D. Waddles, 1910 One of the reasons why many people do not have more money is that they are silently or openly condemning it. They refer to money as filthy lucre or say the love of money is the root of all evil. A man once said to me, I am broke, I do not like money, it is the root of all evil. These statements represent a confused neurotic mind. Love of money to the exclusion of everything else will cause you to become lopsided and unbalanced. You are here to use your power or authority wisely. Some crave power, others crave money. 
If you set your heart on money exclusively and say, money is all I want, I'm going to give all my attention to amassing money, nothing else matters. You can get money and attain a fortune, but you have forgotten that you are here to lead a balanced life. You must also satisfy the hunger for peace of mind, harmony, love, joy, and perfect health. Suppose, for example, you found gold, silver, lead, copper, or iron in the ground. Would you pronounce these things evil? All evil comes from man's darkened understanding, from his ignorance, from his false interpretation of life, and from his misuse of his subconscious mind. Uranium, lead, or some other metal could have been used as a medium of exchange. We use paper notes, checks, nickel, and silver. Surely these are not evil. Insulting the rich is saying you don't want to join them. From The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace D. Waddles, 1910. Get away immediately from all superstitious beliefs about money. Do not ever regard money as evil or filthy. If you do, you cause it to take wings and fly away from you. Remember that you lose what you condemn. Begin to see money in its true significance. It is a symbol of exchange. It means to you freedom from want, beauty, luxury, abundance, and refinement. Better not condemn the very thing you pray for. From The Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Joseph Murphy, 1963. I am sure you have heard men say, that fellow has a racket. He is a racketeer. He is getting money dishonestly. He is a faker. I knew him when he had nothing. He is a crook, a thief, and a swindler. If you analyze the man who talks like that, you discover he is usually in want or suffering from some financial or physical illness. Perhaps his former college friends went up the ladder of success and excelled him. Now he is bitter and envious of their progress. In many instances, this is the cause of his downfall. Thinking negatively of these classmates and condemning their wealth causes the wealth and prosperity he is praying for to vanish and flee away. He is condemning the thing he is praying for. He is praying in two ways. On the one hand, he is saying, Wealth is flowing to me now, and in the next breath, silently or audibly, he is saying, I resent that fellow's wealth. Always make it a special point to rejoice in the wealth of the other person.